Hi, I'm Liz Sose, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cat shirt, perfect for the most finicky feline on your Christmas list. Okay, so to start out your cat shirt, you really only need one measurement, and that's going to be the distance of your cat's chest, so like in between his two arms in the front and back. In my case, that distance is about three inches. Now, because we're going to do this in knit fabric, it's not imperative that it be super super accurate but you just want to get a good idea and you know that cats can be a little bit squirmy so don't try too hard just to get that exact measurement close enough will work you have your little cat right and this is the front of his body i'm not a very good drawer so three inches is going to be this distance here the other distance you're going to need is sort of like around the cat's body from the outside of its arms now, I found it's best to just way cut this too big. So in my case, I'm going to say 20 inches. That's much bigger than he actually is. And I find it's easier to just put a large shirt on him and then size it accordingly. And I'll just take another seam that goes down the back of his spine. So for th that outside circumference, I'm going to use 20 inches. And that should be good enough for both of you unless you have a really large cat like a Maine Coon or something like that. And then sort of the last thing you're going to need is this distance that you want your shirt to be right here. Again, it doesn't have to be accurate and it's actually better if you just start longer than you need because it's very easy to trim this down once you fit the shirt onto your cat. So in my instance, I think I'm going to make this, let's say eight inches for now. I want that to be eight inches and I want this to be 20 inches. So again, these aren't exact measurements. I'm just overestimating what I think I'm going to need. So when you cut out, you're gonna cut out several different rectangles. So the first rectangle is gonna be long and skinny. And the width of this is going to be your chest width plus an extra inch. And that will give us a half inch seam allowance on either side. So, so mine is going to be four inches long this way. And then we have eight inches. I want to do eight inches and then I want to make sure I leave enough room for seam allowance. So I'm going to add an extra inch to give me two half inch seam allowances. And that's going to make this rectangle nine inches long. So the second rectangle we're going to cut is going to be much bigger. For this one, we're gonna use this measurement. Again, I'm gonna add my one inch for seam allowance. Actually, yeah, one inch for seam allowance. Gives me 21. So this is going to be 21 inches long. And just like we did up here, nine inches long. So these are going to form, these two rectangles are going to form the two main parts of the shirt. And then the last thing that you need to do is cut out all of the cuffing. And again, that's going to be another rectangle. So I like to do my cuffing about three inches wide. You're going to fold it in half. So that's going to give you one and a half and then half of that is going to be in the seam allowance. So what you're gonna see with a three inch wide strip is only one inch of cuffing showing. And you wanna just cut enough to make sure that, that again, you have enough. I think around 50 inches should do. If you're working with just little scraps of fabric, um, just cut a lot of cuffing because you're gonna go around um, the neck of the shirt the belly of the shirt, and then the arm sleeves as well. So I am going to go to my fabric and cut out these rectangles. So here I have all of the pieces cut out. This is gonna be the piece that goes around the back. So this is nine by 21 for mine. Um, this is the belly piece, which is 
nine by four. And then I didn't quite have enough fabric to do one continuous piece of cuffing. So I've just done a couple pieces. They're all three inches wide. Um, and just tried to estimate like how long he needed it to be to go around his belly, his neck, and then his arms. And just overcutting a little bit more than I think I'm going to need. So the next step we're going to do is to cut in the armholes on either side of the back piece. So what we're gonna do is cut into the side of the garment like this. And we want to do this three inches from the top. I want this cutout to be about one and a half inches long and then extend about two inches into the garment. So if I go over to this side, I'm going to cut count down three inches. So one, two, three, put a little mark right there. And then I said I want it to be one and a half long. So I'll mark that at one and a half. And then finally I said two inches wide. See, let's go three inches wide. So I'm just gonna cut out just a sort of a free form, sort of round shape connecting those dots. So now I've cut out the two armholes, you should have something that looks like this. Now we can get to starting to sew this together. The first step that I want to do is put some cuffing into these arm sleeves. So I take some of my three inch wide strips of fabric and then I'm gonna just fold those in half. And you wanna make sure that you're folding the wrong sides together. So you have cuffing that has a right side showing on either side. And then we're gonna to go to the right side of our shirt and just pin this on around this arc. And I'm gonna sew this with a zigzag of stitch at a half inch seam allowance. So this is what it's going to look like once it's pinned in place. And you can see from the back, I've just sort of manipulated it around that curve. Um, when you're sewing, you just wanna make sure you're not getting any tucks or anything on the back, but I, I definitely would still sew it as a straight line like this. So here I have already sewn the cuffing into this side of the shirt. You can see how it's just a straight line, sort of I've handled that curve along the armhole. The next step is going to be to turn it to the inside and then just top stitch again with a zigzag stitch right next to our original line of stitching. And that'll just keep the coughing um, in place and going the direction that we want it to go. So once you top stitch that, it should look something like this and you should have that on both sides. If you have any excess of the cuffing, just because I told you guys to rough cut it and had to be exact, you can just go in and trim it so it's even with the side of the shirt now. So the last thing we do before we sort of fit this on our cat is to put in the belly piece. So the belly piece we're gonna pick up and this is gonna be the one that is um, the width of his belly plus an inch for seam allowance and then the same length as this larger piece of fabric. Now there will be a slight opening in the armhole right here so the best way to do it is to start pinning from the bottom and pin up to the armhole here and then align the tops and pin down and that way you know that your opening is, is the width that it should be. Okay, so we're all pinned in place and you can see from the other side that you will have a little gap in there and that's just to allow um, where Kitty's arm lives to give him a little bit extra space. So I'm gonna sew this with a zigzag stitch as well. Here's what it looks like once that's sewn together. I've also gone ahead and just surged that edge because I think it makes it a little bit nicer, um, a little bit more durable because I plan on washing this fairly frequently. 
after he wears it a couple of days. So that's what it looks like from the inside. And then we're just going to, just like we did with the cuffs, we're gonna fold this out and then just do a line of top stitching, a zigzag top stitching going down the length of this. And here's what it'll look like after that top stitching. So this bit right here where there's no cuffing, it's just folded over and sewn. So far that's worked out pretty well for mine. I haven't seen any increased wear in that area. So now we're just going to go to the other side of this shirt and attach the other end. So we should just have a giant um, loop with these two armholes. And we're just gonna do this in the same exact way that we've done the first one pinning from the bottom up to this side, pinning from the top down to this side, and then flipping it out and top stitching. So now you should have something that looks like this. Um, you got your two armholes, we have our belly section that's all been top stitched down. And right now, there looks like nothing on the back. So now's the time that we try this on your kitty. I just found it's a lot easier to make it large and then fit it to him than it was to measure him. Um, when I was trying to measure him with measuring tape, he just wanted to play with measuring tape and eat it. Um, and I just, he was wriggling a lot and it was really hard to get an accurate size. So I just make it really large and then I put it on him. So let's go get my cat and fit the shirt to him. So the first step to fitting the shirt to your cat is to just start with the sleepy cat. He is a lot less finicky when they're sleepy and well fed. Ready to get a shirt on, buddy? He's thinking about it. Once you have the shirt on the cat, you kind of want to pinch up all the excess material so that you can fit it to his body. I'm going to pinch it up here and then add straight pins in. The first time that I actually made this shirt, I did it with safety pins because I was worried about poking my cat. But now I'm not so concerned. He doesn't seem very interested in it. If you're doing it with safety pins, you can let the cat walk around with the safety pins in the shirt for a while. That way you get a good idea that he has good range of motion and it isn't bothering him at all. Now that the fitting's complete, all that's left is to give my cat a treat. I think it's kind of cute when he walks around with this little shark fin. Now to take the shirt off, all you need to do is slide it over his head. My cat just jumps right out. So this is what it looks like after I take it off of him. I've just gone in with a marker and dotted along where I think I need to do my seam line. Now this fitting probably will be a little bit difficult and I would suggest after you sew this line going back and trying it on him again um, inside out just to make sure that fit looks good. Now one thing I will say is after you've made your first shirt it should be fairly easy to make another one without having to actually physically fit it on the cat. You can probably just lay it down and we can see you know this is fairly similar to how I had fit it to him previously. So you could always, after you made your first one, just use this as your template for your next cat shirt so you don't have to keep bothering him every single time. So I'm just going to uh, go on my sewing machine and just stitch up along this line with a zigzag stitch. So here I have sewn along that line with a zigzag stitch. Um, once you try it on your cat again and make sure that that looks like a good fit, we can go ahead and serge off all of this excess material. Now, like I said when um, we were cutting this out, I just made this a lot wider than my cat so that I knew I would have enough and all of this can now go away. So now my shirt looks something like this. It's much smaller. Um, for the main body of the shirt, we only have one more step left, which is to open this out and then top stitch that seam allowance down. Okay, now we have that seam all top stitched along the spine of the shirt. 
So now all that's left to do is add the cuffing to the neck and belly of the shirt. So we want to take um, that three inch strips that we've cut earlier and fold it wrong sides together so with the right sides out. Then I'm going to place that edge along the neck edge of your shirt. You want to cut this strip so that it just meets exactly back on the other side like that. We're going to seam it together so it's going to be just a half an inch to an inch shorter than this but it's always better to have the cuffing a little bit smaller than the shirt than it is to have it a little bit bigger. So I cut it so that's an, it's an, an exact match for this length and then I'm just going to find the ends of our cuffing and sew it together so we have a big loop like this. So here's what it looks like so when it's sewn together. We just go back to having it be a folded piece of fabric. Just sort of open that seam allowance up and, and match them back up. Now I'm going to pin this to my shirt, just sort of pulling it slightly so that it fits around the perimeter. So here I've just sewn that cuffing on and then I've gone ahead and surged the edge as well. Then just like everything else, we want to flip this and then top stitch that seam allowance with a zigzag stitch. And this is what it should look like. You just need to repeat that same process to put the band along the bottom of the shirt and you're done. Okay, so now we have our finished shirt. Let's go try it on him to see how he likes it. What do you think? 